Hey, what's up guys? This is Jody here with another video. The five things you should know about Final Cut Pro 10 in order for it to run smoothly and behave awesomely. So let's get started. Final Cut Pro 10 was Apple's latest NLE release. Now its predecessor was Final Cut Pro 7 and that was targeted specifically, well mostly for professionals. Ooh. Now this latest release was targeted for three types of people. Well, at least I think. And actually, yeah, it's really evident. The first type is a consumer, a person who buys things and uses them. The second type is prosumer, people who buy things and use them a little bit more. And finally, the third, which is modern professionals. Now notice I said modern. Why did I say modern? Modern in this definition equals an editor who has a flexibility to use common formats like 1080, 720, 480, 360, 240, P, basically any content that is uploaded to the internet. That's a modern professional because professionals are basically people who can do things on TV and also internet. But the modern professional is people who do things mostly for internet. Now basically people who upload things to YouTube or Vimeo and do them at a high quality are considered modern professionals I think. And uh, if you could upload a 1080p file basically anywhere that is edited really nicely then consider yourself a professional. That's all I'm gonna say. Anyway here, let's start with the five tips, and uh, these should help you out, and these are just um, things that have crossed my path, and I know for sure that they're going to help you out. So let's get started. Now the first one, you're looking at it. Operating system. Lion versus Snow Leopard. Which operating system should you be on in order for Final Cut Pro 10 to work at its best performance? Now, here's a question I'm going to ask you. Would you rather have better performance, or would you rather have aesthetically pleasing gestures from your operating system? That's the question. If you answered you like performance, then I suggest you run Final Cut Pro 10 with Snow Leopard, because Snow Leopard was designed for speed. It was designed to optimize everything in your operating system, while Lion was created for you to have a better user interface experience. So. Question is, again, what do you prefer? Performance or nice and awesome smooth gestures? Doesn't matter. Line, you will lose a bit, well, just a little tiny bit of performance from your CPU, but mostly from your um, GPU because Line uses a bit more graphics in order to get something across. Whenever you open up a finer window or whenever you open up something, it just pops like bloop, so it looks really futuristic, while Snow Leopard just you know, just chugs it at you. Anyway, that's the first question, the first topic. Choose your operating system. Choose wisely. Okay. Second thing is the total RAM. The myth versus reality. Now, if you go to Apple's website, you're going to see that it says you'd need at least four gigabytes to run this program. Okay, that's the, that's the reality. But the myth is you need four, basically, you need four gigabytes to just open the program. In order to use the program, you need more than four. If you have four, you're in luck. You're going to open the program, but you're not going to use it. Well, you are going to use it, of course, but here's the deal. If you have four gigabytes of RAM and you open up Final Cut Pro 10, you are going to edit smoothly if you don't have anything else open. And if you have one event that is 60 gigabytes and under, then you're fine. But if you have an event that is 60 gigabytes or over, or you have many events but accumulate um, 60 or more gigabytes uh, of space anywhere, then uh, you know you're going to need more RAM. So my suggestion would be get eight gigabytes of RAM at the least. They're $29 now on UEG, Amazon, uh, BNH Photo. They're $29 or 39 or 49 but no more than 50 bucks i mean i remember a year ago they were like 300 dollars, 400 dollars, and they just drop like rocks like stones it's amazing so the more ram you have the more the you know the more space final cut pro 10 has to run around in so if you do have lion basically think of it this way 
the more RAM you have equals the more space you have for children to play, for Final Cut Pro 10, which is a child, and Line, which is another child, to play in freely. Okay, so that's the second topic. The third topic is a uh, graphics card, ATI versus NVIDIA. Now, in order to run Final Cut Pro 10 nicely, I guess, I guess, um, because, you know, I've talked to some trainers that uh, have been training people with uh, Final Cut Pro 10, and specifically, Apple has, you know, told them to train their people with ATI based computers so basically the more modern macbooks and mac imacs not mac pros well actually i think mac pros yeah mac pros too because they use ati so basically final cut pro 10 was designed to run and use ati as opposed to nvidia if you do have an nvidia imac or macbook pro don't worry about it you know but i am talking to those of you who want to buy a new mac buy a mac that has ATI. Go to the Apple website if you want to save some money. Go to the refurbished section. They have so many great deals. You could save hundreds of dollars there. So, you know, ATI. Make sure you get a computer if you're going to purchase one that has ATI. Now, I've heard some rumors that Apple is going back to NVIDIA, but I'm not so sure. It's just a rumor. MacRumors.com. Anyway, let's get to the fourth one, which is external hard disk drives. What type should you get? Now, I'm going to be direct. If you're editing using your internal drive, are you okay? You're okay. You need an external hard drive in order to do any, uh, edit anything in Final Cut Pro 10. Because if you use your internal drive where your OS is stored at, then you are creating problems for your computer. Thus, you will probably need a system restore soon. So, Buy an external hard drive, and remember, this is key, it must be self-powered. Should be self-powered. What I mean by self-powered is an external drive that is designed for desktop use. Now, I use Lacy drives, and those drives are the most reliable I've, I've encountered myself editing with. You could get these drives so for so cheap at Craigslist, at eBay, you know, um, Make sure they're self-powered. Now, what are the benefits between self-powered and computer-dependent power? I've seen some people edit with USB portable drives, and uh, that kind of drives me nuts. You know, I say, how, how are you going to expect great performance if you're going to use something that is not only consuming power from your computer, but also... Uh, is slower because if the portable drive is using power it's obviously going to use some data transfer speed in order for it just to be alive while an external drive that is self-powered has potential to power itself and also deliver transfer speeds at a much higher rate so you know just keep that in mind external drives self-powered and make sure your connection is at least firewire 800 or 400 just at least try not to do it USB it's not gonna work well you know you could but don't expect as great performance as you can now actually there is no excuse buy an external hard drive they're cheap now <laughs> alright finally let's go to the last one which is conserve power and one more app besides FCPX I cannot stress this enough I've um experimented with Final Cut Pro 10 and one more app before you open up Final Cut Pro 10 should be open. Now this app could be anything except a browser. It cannot be Google Chrome, it cannot be Firefox and it cannot be Safari or in, uh, you know they can't be a browser because if you have four gigabytes of RAM or if you just want to you know use a lot of RAM for Final Cut Pro 10 Final Cut Pro 10 will use up all your RAM. If you open up it alone, if you only open Final Cut Pro 10, it will eat up all your RAM. And if you, let's say, during the editing process, you're like, you know what? I want to make an image. And I want to make uh, a lower third in Photoshop. You open up Photoshop, and basically your computer will probably freeze, and Final Cut Pro 10 might crash because it's trying to relocate every um, you know piece of RAM that you have 
that's being used, it's relocating that space in order for it to open up Photoshop. Thus, it might crash Final Cut Pro 10. Now, don't worry about it. You won't lose your work because Final Cut Pro 10 is designed to save your work before it crashes. So, yeah, that's their excuse for, <laughs> for it to crash a lot. <laughs> anyway, those are just five things you should know. And also, one more thing. This is extra if you're watching this. If you've made it here, you're awesome. You're dedicated. You are dedicated. Anyway, the extra tip that I'm going to give you guys is um, if you're editing with an external hard drive, go here. Go to the Apple. Click on the Apple. Go to System Preferences. Okay, now go to Energy Saver. Little light bulb. Now, if you're running online, I recommend you uncheck this. Whenever you, if you have Lion, uncheck it. So that way your computer doesn't, you know, so you don't hear the fans go, you know, they, they crank up at some times and they don't. So basically, uh, uncheck that, and then once you know you're done editing, go back here and check it if you'd like. If not, leave it on. And also, you're going to have these three, four options checked. I would recommend you just uncheck the, put the hard drive, hard disk to sleep with possible. Uncheck that. Now, what happens when you leave a check? Basically, every time, let's say you're editing, cool, and you leave, let's say, uh, to go get a glass of water, and you come back. And let's say you left for five minutes and you come back. Basically, once you move your mouse, you're going to hear mm, with that, and then you're going to wait maybe for, you know, a minute, depending on your external hard drive and your internal hard drive to wake itself up again. So, you know, if you don't like that, don't, you know, uncheck this and, you know, just uncheck it. And um, yeah, just uncheck that. So. Thanks for watching this. If you made it this far, you're awesome, and you're a dedicated Final Cut Pro 10 user, or you're probably just wondering whether you should get it or not. I think you should. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. 100%. Because this is the future of NLEs, I cannot stress that enough. 64-bit, it's, wow, it's an amazing program. It's you can do so many things with it. In the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover whether you should buy this or not. I mean, they, uh, Apple is offering a 30-day trial, so go ahead and use it experiment, it, experiment with it, and let's see what happens. Thank you very much for watching, and um, please share this video out. Would be much, would be cool. All right, thank you, and have a great day.